Welcome to the 2017 NCYC Parish Delegation Leader and Chaperone Orientation video. On behalf of Bishop Pates, Justin White, our Diocesan Director for Youth and Young Adult Ministry, my wife Jane Gaffney and me, please know how much we appreciate your dedication to ensuring that our teens have a joy-filled and spiritual encounter with Christ. We also hope that you have time to recharge your spiritual core as well while at the conference. I know for my wife and I, being around close to 25,000 youth and adult chaperone, celebrating our Catholic faith helps us better see the face of God as we come back home to the Diocese of Des Moines to live out our faith amongst our brothers and sisters. Please, that, please know that before this pilgrimage, our staff at the diocese has prayed for you and your special intentions. Along with your parish delegation leader, there are three people from the diocese who are charged to take extra care, special care of you while on the road and in Indianapolis. Those people are Justin White, who I mentioned before. Uh, if you didn't get a chance to meet him at the Diocesan Catholic Youth Conference, you're in for quite a treat at the National Catholic Youth Conference. I think you'll very much enjoy getting to know Justin. And for those of you who've been with us before, you'll get a chance to see my wife, Jane Gaffney, who is our program coordinator. Uh, she's done a lot of pilgrimages with me, and she uh, is uh, just super uh, at uh, bringing everything together. And then there's me, John Gaffney. I'm the Diocesan Director for Evangelization and Catechesis for the Diocese. And uh, once again, the National Catholic Youth Conference Diocesan Delegate. Along with us, there are a couple of other people who are going to help us make this a wonderful experience as well. The first person is Kelly Mesher Collins. Kelly is our media specialist here at the diocese, and she'll be on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, uh, as well as interviewing people so that uh, digitally and also when we get back, um, we have a great uh, we have a great coverage of this event for both our young adults, uh, chaperones, our older chaperones, as well as, as well as all the teens. The other person that we have with us this year is Jason Collins, which is Kelly's uh, husband. Uh, Jason will be especially helpful with us in hospitality at the hotel. Um, one of his uh, big tasks is being part of our roaming Catholics, who ensure that uh, once young people and adult chaperones are in the sleeping rooms, or on the floors where the uh, rooms are at, that those uh, areas remain quiet and respectful of the other guests of the Marriott. During NCYC, it's important for all our adults to be adventurous, joyful, prayerful, and responsible. We want the city of Indianapolis the staff and other guests at the Marriott Hotel and the entire city of Indianapolis to see that the youth and adult chaperones of the Diocese of Des Moines are grateful for their hospitality and thankful for all the work they've done to bring this great conference to us. After watching this video, we would I ask you that if you will please email your parish delegation leader, that's the person who sent this link to you, and let them know that you have participated in this orientation. Uh, we as the diocese have to send a notarized affidavit that our chaperones have been well prepared, that they, are, um, they have taken safe environment training, as well as um, they've had all background checks. And so we've already done that, so this is the final step in, in making sure that you're well prepared and that the Archdiocese of, uh, of Indianapolis is ready to accept us as a delegation. If you have any questions whatsoever after watching this video, please feel free to send those to uh, by email to your delegation leader uh, at the parish. Uh, that person, he or she, will send it to me, and then I will respond not only back to your delegation leader, but then probably to everybody so that they get a chance uh, to see the question and the answer. Chances are, if you had the question, other people will too. So let's kind of go through real quickly some of the more important points of being a chaperone at the National Catholic Youth Conference. The first part is to be informed. 
And for our part on the diocese, we try and do this especially uh, by helping you with a one-page newsletter each day. Uh, there's many stories on the uh, keynote le uh, speakers for the day. Uh, this year, there are a couple of concerts that go along with the National Catholic Youth Conference, uh, one by Toby Mack and one by Matt Marr, so there'll be a little bit on both of them. We'll also have information on some breakout sessions for the teens and the adults that might be very interesting to uh, uh, to take a look at in case you haven't seen it, as well as other parts of the um, National Catholic Youth Conference experience that you may not have uh, thought about uh, that uh, are also uh, a great uh, benefit to our youth as and you as adults. So, so you'll have those. And the first one that you'll get while in Indianapolis will be the very first evening. Um, the hotel has a guest lounge that we'll be uh, having every evening and also every morning. Uh, and we'll talk more about the guest lounge a little bit later. But in the guest lounge, there'll be a table from the Diocese of Des Moines. And at that table will be these newsletters. I encourage all delegation leaders and chaperones to come and to, uh, to take those newsletters uh, so that you're well informed. Because the big key is uh, that we want you to uh, have a strategic plan for your group of people that you're chaperoning. Because the more you have this plan, the less likely it is that somebody could get lost. It is so easy to get lost when there are that many people, and especially if you're in a place that is uh, unfamiliar to you. And even though the convention center is one big, one big building, it has lots of parts, and even when it's empty, it's easy to get lost in, let alone if there are 25,000 people in it. So, uh, so have a plan. That will be very, very helpful for you. Um, and, and, and again, the other thing part of that plan is we want to make sure that no young person is, just goes off on their own. Uh, we want them to, at the very least, be paired up with another young person, and even better, small groups is, is, is the best way to go. We'll talk a little bit more about uh, how to accompany your group a little bit later. Your first uh, newsletter will be sent to you digitally a week before we leave for National Catholic Youth Conference. Another item is to be ready for a physical experience. NCYC is incredible, but it's also uh, a lot of, of, of work uh, and not a lot of sleep. So we begin our day around 7 o'clock in the morning and probably don't end it till midnight or a little bit after that. So there are a couple of things that are very, very important uh, in, in, in getting ready for this. First of all, get lots of sleep before National Catholic Youth Conference so that you're ready for it. And in fact, uh, the bus ride, if, 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 you're, if you can do it, uh, get some rest on that bus ride. Uh, it'll be well worth it. Uh, once you get there. Um, the other thing is uh, make sure you pack a good pair of shoes. Uh, when you're at the conference, lots of hydration, having a snack or two and a great attitude is going to take you a long ways. Um, we are in a great location once again. Marriott Hotel is on the north side um, of the convention center. It's on the same street as the convention center, just on the very north side. Uh, and to Lucas Oil Stadium, it's about four or five blocks, but those are long blocks. So, uh, so there will be a lot of walking um, uh, to and from the hotel and the convention center. The bus schedules and the hotel room assignments have already been sent to your parish delegation leaders. We do leave very early on Thursday morning. Uh, depending upon uh, the location of your parish, that could mean as early as 3 o'clock in the morning to as late as 6 o'clock in the morning. What I ask is that you be at your, loca your pickup location at least 15 or 20 minutes before uh, your, uh, your bus is scheduled to leave. That'll make sure everything goes smoothly with launching all of our buses. So adult chaperones and teens, get there early and get on the bus. The other thing is um, realize that there are going to be some people getting on uh, many times if you're the first 
parish delegation. They're going to be people who get on later. So it's really important to make sure that those people uh, have plenty of places as well. So, so you as your parish plot out a plot, uh, place in the bus, um, but realize we're going to fill up the whole bus on the way to uh, Lucas Oil Stadium. Each bus does have a bus boss. This is a person who's uh, one of the delegation leaders from the parishes um, that have volunteered to do that. What they do is they coordinate uh, kind of the trip with the other parish delegation leaders. So things like food and bathroom stops. They also coordinate uh, the movies. Uh, movies can be a little bit tricky these days because remember we're on a Christian uh, conference, so we want to be uh, mindful of, of good movies that, uh, that, that help us uh, uh, enjoy the goodness of life. Uh, but there's a lot of uh, movies that uh, uh, are difficult to, to figure out these days. So, so they try and figure those out. Uh, they're also very helpful to the driver. And they're very helpful to me as we get about 30 minutes out from Indianapolis so that I can make sure that I greet your delegation leaders and get you checked into the hotel as quickly as possible. Um, it is recommended that teens and chaperones only bring what you really feel is necessary when it comes to technology. Uh, technology is wonderful, but uh, many of these items are very expensive. They can get broken. They can get stolen. It hasn't happened in the last couple of National Catholic Youth Conferences, but that isn't to say it won't happen this time, and it has happened in the past. So my best advice to you and to your teens is keep them at home. They'll be there when you get back. It is recommended uh, uh, that uh, um, teens do have phones with them, though, uh, because it's going to be the best way in which uh, you're able to communicate, especially by text with them. We do have some t-shirt days. This is important. Uh, real briefly, um, Thursday, as you're getting on the bus, if you have some Diocesan Catholic Youth Conference t-shirts, uh, CYC t-shirts, uh, something from uh, a mission trip that you've done, or any other Christian shirts, great day to wear those. Friday, November 17th is our Diocesan NCYC t-shirt. So uh, put those wonderful uh, new 2017 shirts on. And then Saturday is your parish t-shirts. This is a great way in which uh, people from around the country get a chance to see who you are and where you're from and to talk a little bit about uh, 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 what it's like to be from that part of the country. It's a great icebreaker. We, again, are at the Marriott Hotel in downtown uh, Indianapolis. And a few things about the hotel. First of all, the hotel does not have uh, refrigerators. So um, if you are going to bring anything that needs refrigeration, you might want to bring it in a cooler, and then you can continue to add ice to that. There should be plenty of storage underneath the bus for, uh, for a cooler that you may want to bring. We have asked that all the pay-per-view options be turned off. All long-distance options uh, for the telephone have been turned off. You can certainly make local phone calls or room-to-room -room phone calls, but no long distance. If teens are uncomfortable sharing a bed, uh, there are a couple of options. Uh, they could certainly bring a sleeping bag. There are plenty of pillows, so they could certainly do that. Uh, the other option, if it's compact, is uh, an uh, a air mattress. Uh, those things have been very helpful and useful in the past. Uh, some, uh, especially the guys, sometimes will pull the um, mattress off the box springs and, uh, and somebody will sleep on the box springs and somebody will sleep on the mattress. Uh, that is perfectly fine. Um, what we do ask, though, is on Sunday morning that the mattress be put back on top of the box springs. Even better yet, it'd be nice if that were to happen every night or every morning after, uh, before you head off for the day. Um, re do remember there are other guests. We will be staying with uh, uh, the Diocese of Lafayette, Indiana in, in our hotel. Also the uh, leadership of the National Federation of Catholic Youth Ministry and VIPs will also be in the hotel. But then there will be other guests who've paid uh, for the Marriott as well who are not part of the National Catholic Youth Conference. So all of the sleeping floors need to be as quiet as possible. 
And we, I ask you as the chaperones to help us ensure that that happens. You should be familiar with the teen and adult chaperone code of conduct. I ask that all the delegation leaders make sure that you have a copy of those. Uh, it is best if you as the chaperone go through those uh, code of conducts with your teen item by item. Um, and it's important for you to kind of go through your own item by item. In fact, I even share, uh, in the years that I was a chaperone, I would share uh, my code of conduct with the teens. So they see that um, we're also asked to uh, abide by a certain code of conduct. And the reason for doing this is it's very, uh, um, it, 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 the, the consequences of breaking that code of con conduct can be very extreme. Um, it, and so the National Federation, the hotel staff, um, as well as your DASA's delegation take these very seriously because there have been times I've had to send teens home at the expense of their parents, um, his or her parents, um, for uh, serious infractions against the Code of Conduct. And I really don't want to do that. And the best way to stop that from happening is for each of the teens to understand the Code of Conduct. Chaperones and youth are expected to participate in all conference activities. While breaks are certainly uh, expected and taken for meals and personal care, attendees should just not be hanging out in the hallways. Uh, in fact, one of the hardest things I always think as part of the National Catholic Youth Conference is that you can't do it all. Um, the, uh, the, the lines for food are just a little too long, and you're going to have to um, miss something. And again, that's the reason for the plan. That's the reason why uh, a little bit later I'll talk about chaperoning, but it's one of the reasons why we want you to have lunch with your young people um, because uh, you, they're going to have to miss something, and they should be with you if they're going to be missing something. Wake-up calls. Uh, we've all dealt with teens. We all know how... Um, they don't want to get up in the morning. I don't really like to get up in the morning. Uh, my wife definitely doesn't like to get up in the morning. But one way that you can ensure to get them down in the lobby together with you and perhaps your entire parish delegation is wake-up calls. Um, I usually time the first one out about an hour before. Um, uh, so an hour before uh, you're going to leave the hotel. The second one about 30 minutes before you're leaving the hotel. And the last one, if, uh, if, if they're not all down there in the hotel lobby, uh, maybe send somebody up to knock on the door about 15 minutes before leaving, just to make sure everybody is down there and, and you're ready to go. As a chaperone, you're going to work very closely with your parish delegation leader and the teams to, again, develop that plan of what you're going to do for the day. Uh, so, so when I was a chaperone, or actually when I was a youth ministry leader at St. Teresa's and also at the Basilica, uh, what I would do is work with my chaperones to develop plans that they would be comfortable with. Some chaperones are, are, are comfortable in letting their teens, uh, as long as they have a plan, uh, go on their own with check-in points at certain locations uh, at, at the convention center. Um, and then that they would also have lunch together as a, um, as a small group. And, and that is perfectly fine. The way for that to ensure that that works is to have a spot at the convention center where you meet and then the kids know what time you are to meet. And this is also a good time to send a group text about an hour beforehand to remind them to meet at that particular time. Um, other chaperones are not as comfortable with that and I certainly understand that, especially if you're a first time chaperone or um, you you may have more young people than you would prefer. So um, feel free to um, you know hang out and accompany the kids uh, to to some of the uh, uh, activities. Uh, do know though that some of the mega workshops uh, uh, may be um, uh, focused more on on young ladies and some on young men. And, and we also want to feed you as an adult. So, um, so, so please kind of keep that in mind as well. Uh, but whatever method you feel it works for you, develop that plan 
and let the kids know uh, about that plan so that they can follow it for you. Chaperones are required to collect all keys uh, from your teams before you leave for uh, the uh, Lucas Oil Stadium in the morning. So in the hotel lobby, get all the keys. Each of the envelopes should have the names of the kids on the envelope, so you can put them in there, store them safely in your bag until you get back there in the evening and give them out. This way, the kids are not going back to the hotel room um, without adult supervision. Before leaving the hotel each day, um, you do want to check and make sure that the teens and you might want to check each other as adult chaperones. You have everything you need. And so I'm going to kind of go through some uh, a quick little list. The first one is your credentials. Now, uh, your credentials are part of a lanyard, and so your credentials will probably be right around here hanging from your neck. Uh, very easy to see, so very easy for the staff at uh, the convention center and the stadium to see, and very easy for you to see. Uh, but they do sometimes get forgotten, and you can't get into those venues if you don't have them. So make sure that they have their credentials. Um, make sure that they have a copy of their medical permission form in there. You should also have a copy of the teens that you're chaperoning with you, just in case. And your delegation leader should have copies of all adults and, um, and the teens uh, with them as well. Uh, we at the diocese do not keep medical permission forms. So it's important that before you leave home, uh, the delegation leader has all of those. NCYC has a program book that they usually give out. Uh, those uh, are easy and can be put into your lanyard as well. Um, however, they also have a wonderful app for Apple and Android phones that you can download for free. You just uh, go to your uh, store, your app store, and download NCYC 2017. Uh, and it, it's really an easy app to get around. It shows you all of the conference uh, breakout sessions, gives you a little idea of what it's about, and then if you select that, it creates actually a schedule for you. So it might be something you as a chaperone and a delegation leader want to play with ahead of time, and then on the bus ride, you can kind of show the kids how to do it or in a meeting beforehand. Great way to develop that plan. Another thing you want to keep is a water bottle. There are refill stations at the convention center. I know it may be difficult, but try and get the, uh, the teens to take a coat or a jacket. It can get very cold that time of year in Indianapolis. And um, it's helpful to help the kids not take everything that they feel they have to. Uh, that bag can get pretty heavy by the end of the day. So take only what you need for, for the day. And then also, if you have time, uh, check the rooms. You can do this from the threshold. Uh, you don't have to enter into the room. And just make sure they're not too messy. The uh, staff knows that there's a whole bunch of teenagers, and they know they're a little bit different than adults. But at the same time, it's nice if, uh, uh, if, if you could take a look. Chaperones are not allowed to go anywhere that the kids aren't allowed to go. So no lounges, no bars. Uh, we ask that all uh, uh, adult beverages be refrained from. Uh, while to and from uh, Indianapolis. So uh, so please keep that in mind. And also keep in mind that adult chaperones are not allowed to enter into a teen's room uh, without at least another adult chaperone present. So if you do feel it's necessary to enter into a room uh, that of, of people you're chaperoning, uh, please ask another adult chaperone to go in with you. There is a curfew that's set by the NCYC leadership of midnight. It's at all hotels, so the hotels understand this. Uh, we do have, a uh, uh, again, a hospitality lounge that will be uh, available to us. I do ask that about 11.45 uh, p.m. we start ushering the young people upstairs into the sleeping areas so that uh, by midnight uh, that room is cleared and they're in their rooms. Uh, but the room is a great place to debrief your group for the day, uh, enjoy some late night pizza. Um, as part of the food list that I showed you, I've got uh, hot box pizza on there. They've been of uh, great help to us at the diocese in the past and have a good product for not a lot of money, and they're close to the hotel. So, uh, so you might want to order from them. 
but my my uh, recommendation is order early in the day so you can definitely get it by 10:30. There have been times when people have not have waited till about 10 o'clock to order pizza, and then the pizza doesn't even get there till midnight, and we do have that midnight curfew. So, so keep that in mind. Um, room checks, room uh, room checks take place at midnight. Teens are not allowed to congregate in the hallways of the sleeping floors, so that's very important. Again, there are guests uh, that uh, are not from our delegation in the hotel, so we want to be respectful of, of that. So, so keep that in mind. Um, we do want the teens also to get a lot of sleep. That doesn't always happen. If they are going to watch TV, we really do ask that they keep the TV on low uh, so they don't disrupt their neighbors. Um, I do ask that you do an inspection of the room on Sunday morning once the teens are out of it. Uh, this way you can, first of all, see is there something there that they left. Uh, every time I have... Uh, things that uh, the teens have left that I bring back with me in my car from uh, from Indianapolis. But the other thing is if there's something broken or damaged, uh, please let me know so I can let the hotel staff know uh, as well. I would very much appreciate it. The hotel does have a video monitoring system and they have staff who monitor each floor by foot. So it's important to let the teens know that. Um, there have been times when uh, we've had teens out of their rooms after midnight, and that's not allowed. Um, I will get a phone call. I will talk to the teen and get them back to their room, but then I'll also talk to the parish delegation leader and the chaperone about making sure that they understand that that teen needs to stay in her or his room um, after that. We also have our own roaming Catholics who uh, monitor the rooms uh, uh, well after uh, their curfew. So. So let the teens know that once they're in that room, they just need to stay in that room until morning. Uh, chaperones should make sure that each teen that you're in charge of has the following information in their credentials, with their credentials, and that is the hotel uh, name and telephone number, um, my information, Justin's, Jane's, uh, as well as your phone number and your name. And I will make sure I provide that to all delegation leaders it's best if you fill out that information uh, before you leave on Thursday. So I, you'll get a packet with all of your uh, credentials. Have the kids uh, make sure that they fill all of those out before they uh, uh, head over to Lucas Oil Stadium on Thursday evening. Um, it is also helpful to have an emergency meeting location um, picked out at the convention center if something should happen. You never hope that there's an emergency, uh, but it's always good to have one just in case. And speaking of emergencies, the last point is on medical emergencies. The biggest part of this protocol is that you allow Justin and myself or my wife to help you with a medical emergency. You do also need to include your diocesan or your parish delegation leader um, in on this as well. Uh, some of these medical emergencies can be uh, very minor. Some can be actually rather major. And so we want to work as a team to help you. Uh, sometimes uh, the best thing is for the young person to go back to the hotel and get some rest. So we'll get the hotel key. And at least two adults will accompany that young person back. The adults usually will stick in the lobby while the young person is up in the room sleeping um, and, and that, that works out nicely. Um, we do have cars available. So if it's not an emergency um, but does need uh, uh, to go to a clinic or to a hospital, we can transport that person. Um, one of the other things I do ask chaperones to do is to locate the first aid stations, especially at the convention center, uh, so that in case you need to utilize that, uh, you know where they're at. And with regards to medication, I ask that each of the delegation leaders uh, make sure you have a good list of anyone, adult or teen, taking medications. Um, it, it's helpful because, again, when a medical emergency happens, sometimes people do not realize uh, to uh, are able to answer the question about medication. So, so that is extremely helpful, and that's either over the counter or um, or prescription. Regarding food, 
uh, accompanying this uh, video is some recommendations on food places that are close. There is food at the convention center uh, and, and just realize that there's 25,000 people so there are lines and it's going to take a little bit of time but uh, it's also a good time to bond with your young people. Um, what I would also say is you might want to advise your parents that twenty to thirty dollars a day for each of your young people is probably enough for food. Uh, they don't really eat as much as us older people and uh, uh, that should take care of it. We'll also have a pizza party with Bishop Pate's following mass, uh, our own little mass um, uh, on uh, Friday evening. So so uh, that's already paid for and uh, they'll enjoy some time with Bishop Pates. Uh, the other thing that's accompanying this uh, video is a easy to see schedule. So whether you're a first time chaperone or have done this many times, you can kind of see where we need to be and at what times. So, so that should be helpful for you as well. Lastly, I just want to say on behalf of Bishop Pates and all of us here at the diocese, thank you for saying yes to being a chaperone for NCYC 2017. This doesn't happen without you and without your yes. And our hope is that we can take some of the weight off of your shoulders so that you not only have an enjoyable time with your young people, but that you yourself get a chance to encounter Christ at the National Catholic Youth Conference. If you have any questions, again, contact your parish delegation leader and they will be in contact with me. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you in Indianapolis. God bless.